said between PPP and GLP, what, what, what could be the first thing that comes to your mind? Um, GMP is uh, the, like the gross national product. Um, um, oh, what is the difference between GNP, okay, it's a gross national product, but as well as GNP, have you heard, is per capita? Have you heard that? So the difference is like the GNP of China, for instance. It's one of the big, you know, the greatest, the biggest in the world. But maybe not so much the GNP per capita in comparison. Okay, the GNP per capita is like especially for the middle class. What is the income of the vast majority of the Mexican? What is like the middle class over there, what is their par the, the, the purchase power per person versus the country, okay? It can vary a lot, vary a lot. So what would be the main difference, again, between GNP and PPP? It's based on your definition, I mean, GNP is just, what, development of products, you know, by that country, within the country, and also, you know, anyone that would be associated with that country, even if they do it in another country, um, whereas PPP seems more like it's your purchasing power. So, you know, it's almost like foreign exchange of currencies, but instead of doing it on a number of basis, it seems like you're just using um, various products. So, you know, how much does milk cost here versus China, or you know, how much does a you know gallon of gas cost here versus China? And mm -hmm. comparing that as a as a purchasing power, or as another way to, um, I guess, as another means to measure the value of your currency, basically. Correct. So, but there are another these indicators. Okay, the GNP, the PPP, the GDP. What is what is GDP? Some, we had that somewhere. Let's, what is GDP? Gross it's, domestic power. It's the uh, monetary measure of market value of final goods and services produced in a period. Like let's say for one country, it's uh, uh, the amount of money that's produced in a like let's say if it's quarterly or yearly, mm -hmm. so in a certain period of time. So if you take that uh, formula, your uh, consumer spending plus the sum of government spending, uh, investments will be your GDP. It's the I. Okay, so basically, basically, <laughs> all of these are indicators, okay, economical, basically economical indicators of a country's power and uh, growth or potential as well for growth. Do we want to have that as a um, GNP, for instance, or um, for the nation per se, but we can have as well the GNP per capita. Um, HDI, that stands for Human Development Index. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, no problem. So those are indicators, okay, related to uh, the, the economical aspect of globalization. So globalization too main um, ways of taking it, of seeing it, of uh, analyzing it, of understanding it to make business, right, in a global aspect, so economical and social. These ones, all of these, are measurements of uh, economical measurements, okay? When we talk about political economies, I don't know if you remember from my class, the previous class, we had 
if we have to divide in a very, very basic way to market or political, to economists, what could you say? What could be like, for instance, concrete example, Polonia. What was Polonia? Polonia, uh, 30 years ago, Polonia is between Germany and Russia. What type of economy was that? Well, the economy was uh, communist. They were part of the Soviet Union. Part of the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. So it, we, it's not a free market. It's not a yeah. It's not an economic. Really. It's a command. It's command. Oh, yeah. Command. Okay. Command economy mm -hmm. versus market economy and everything that we have in between. All those transition economies. Okay. So. Depending on the type of economic government, the government is going to influence drastically the uh, economic approach of the country. So transitional economies that used to be command economies, command economies, the ones that are uh, ruled, centralized by the government, right. okay? It used to be not always, because there have been command economies ruled by, for instance, Spanish dictator, Franco. Okay, it was like 40 years in Spain. Uh, and that was command. Everything was centralized. A lot of the positions were given by the government. Uh, the market uh, was not ruled uh, by the needs of the market itself, okay, of the people who were going to buy, but by the government. The government was setting prices. Okay, I'm saying that this is going to be cheaper because I need to promote my um, country. Okay, so there was less trade than nowadays. Right now, so what I'm saying with that type of economies, but they are influenced totally by the political environment. And that would be the, the as far as I want to say. A typical command economy that is, well, yeah, it's this communist. <laughs> that is going on. What's going on nowadays with this country, the, the, the showing demonstration of America and the missiles? What country are you talking about right now? North Korea. North Korea, right? <laughs> okay. But South Korea went through a totally different uh, reform, okay? So, sometimes. Some economical reform are influenced the political environment. That's the case of China. The government has no other options than to open up. And sometimes it's the contrary. Okay. Uh, very good. Bank and the IMF, both of them were established at the same the same year. Right. Okay. What else? And um, it is a kind of a uh well, according to the, the lesson guide in, in the module, is 184 countries, but according to the website, it's 189 countries based out of the headquarters in Washington, right? Mm -hmm. But it's run by a director of uh, 24 director, which is a representative of like one country or a group of smaller countries to come together and uh, make all these decisions to help. I mean, that's almost the same as the World Bank boosts the economy of the of the smaller country, I guess you can say. And um, like one of the examples that uh, I found is uh, when uh, the Soviet Union broke apart, uh -huh. and they went in and, and, and tried to uh, set or the smaller country to become an economic driven instead of you know the way they were. Okay. So the difference is like the World Trade Organization is much more related to what type of agreements and trades and uh, soft disputes, but this one is is it's more of, a, of monetary about the right, currencies, right. about up, the correct the people. The, the financing, right, right, that's the, the financing a part of it. So if that's got between 185 and 180 countries, 
that are involved, IMF. Yeah. Okay. So, as well, promoting stability, trying to promote exchange of stability, and uh, specifically with the financing part of it. Okay.